Only in the game just to get my fatty. And need lazy, ain't got competition. It's me versus me, love key talk. Game. Key Talk Society, check it out. Before the video gets started, I need y'all to like the video, you know what I'm talking about? You know I'm gonna come with the content every day, all day, you know what I'm talking about? like the video for me, take two seconds. Anyway. So a while ago, Honeycomb Brazy actually came out and said that when he was in prison in Alabama, it was literally like a slavery system, which wasn't no surprise because most prisons everywhere is pretty much a modern day form of slavery. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, if you read the 13th Amendment, it literally says, and also y'all, my voice <coughs> is, is a little off right now. Uh, I'm recovering. I, this is my, my third day of being uh, you know, sick, but I just want to make sure I get the content out to y'all. Uh, and don't let any type of sickness just hold me back. But anyways, see, I can't even do the anyways thing right right now. <clears throat> anyway, so Honeycomb Brazy did come out and he pretty much said that when he was inside of the Alabama a prison, it was like slavery pretty much. Right. Which isn't too unfamiliar to us because we know that the 13th Amendment says it, it freed the slaves and said, hey, you're pretty much you're free from slavery and involuntary servitude unless you get in prison. So once you actually g get in prison and go to jail, you're considered a slave. Like you actually can be legally treated as if you're a slave uh, because that's the loophole. Right. So all the times, anytime the slavery was freed or any laws passed to protect former slaves, there's always another law uh, that was put in place to pretty much, you know, loophole around whatever was put in place right well i'm going to read y'all what the uh former inmates and the current inmates because they they're actually filing a lawsuit against the uh alabama prison system and we're going to go into detail into what they're saying right so it says <clears throat> Current and former inmates announced a lawsuit Tuesday challenging Alabama prison labor program as a type of modern day slavery, saying prisoners are forced to work for little pay and sometimes no pay in jobs that benefit governmental entities or private companies. So obviously a lot of people understand and know that uh, that the people in prison, they're, they're building stuff, they're doing all this type of work. And yeah, it's benefiting the, the big corporations, uh, but it's super benefiting them because they're not having to pay those people in jail that's doing the work because they're legally considered slaves. So now people are trying to file a lawsuit against them uh, I don't think it'll do anything because the Constitution literally says you turn into a slave uh, after that. And if it was anything anybody could do, they would have already tried to fix that. You know what I'm talking about? This ain't something that just now happened. It's been this way for a long time. But let's continue reading on what it says, right? The class action suit also accuses the state of maintaining a discriminatory parole system with a low release rate that ensures a supply of laborers while also generating money for the state. So, yeah, they ain't, they ain't letting too many people get parole uh, because they need as many people in that in the system working as possible. And then, of course, you got private prisons where if you go to a private prison, it's privately owned and they literally have a contract with the U.S. government. They're like, if they don't don't stay 85 percent filled up the prison don't then they can sue the u.s government right so uh you know they they have they definitely want to keep you inside of the jail and not free you at all uh and then it continues and says the forced labor scheme that currently exists in the alabama prison system is the modern reincarnation of the notorious convict leasing system that replaced slavery after the civil war see what i told you Every time something happened positively for former slaves or people that were enslaved, there's always another law or something within the law that creates a loophole so that you can put them back into some type of form or fashion of slavery. That's just how it goes. And if you're not smart enough to read or understand, then you will definitely get caught up in it. Right. Uh, and then it says the Alabama Department of Corrections and the Alabama Attorney General's Office declined to comment and, on the suit. Yeah, they don't want to comment on it. They understand that the Constitution says the 13th Amendment says, hey, if these people do something wrong, now they're back into slavery. So I don't expect them to want to come in on it. Uh, they probably just come in on it in court if they have to. They probably dealt with stuff like this as well. Like I told y'all, it's not about, uh, you know, the lawsuit. Yeah, that's cool that they filed a lawsuit, but will there be any type of repercussions will there be any type of healing will there be any type of laws or rules change i doubt it you know what i'm talking about um in, in america we pretty much we were built off of people doing free labor and we continue to grow off of people doing cheap and free labor all those the hispanics is coming over here and stuff like that um for instance a long not a long time ago like years ago 
I worked at a place at churches like I mean it was years and years ago, right? I worked at churches and in the back they had two two Hispanic workers who worked twelve hour shifts but got paid like I think either right at minimum wage or even under minimum wage. And that's a lot of companies that actually do that, right? Uh, but anyways, let's continue. The suit accuses the state of violating the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution, anti-human trafficking laws, and the Alabama Constitution. The lawsuit contends that the state maintains a forced labor scheme that coerces inmates into work. The suit says these uh, those jobs include unpaid prison jobs in which inmates perform tasks that help keep the facility running. Just imagine that. They're doing jobs that's keeping the actual facility running and not getting paid not even a penny you know talking about not getting paid nothing at all um the suit says jobs include uh, facility running inmates and in work release might perform jobs where businesses pay minimum wage or more but the prison system keeps 40 percent of a prisoner's gross pay to defray the cost of the incarceration and also deduct fees for transportation and laundry services. The lawsuit referred to the state's 40% reduction as a labor trafficking fee. So just imagine they do get paid the right amount, but then the, 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 then the, the prison actually takes 40% and then on top of the 40 percent that they take for the labor trafficking fee, they take a laundry fee and then also another fee as well. So, whew, yeah, it, like I say, it's definitely sounding like a, a form of slavery. Uh, but that 13th Amendment lets you know that already. It says inmates relate their experiences. Uh, Lakira Walker, who was previously incarcerated for 15 years, said the work unpaid jobs at the prison including housekeeping and unloading trucks she said later worked on an inmate road crew of two dollars a day and then a work release job working 12 hour shifts at a warehouse freezer for a food company she said and the other inmates felt pressure to work even if sick goodness gracious two dollars a day unloading trucks god dang you know somebody that's just whoo goodness great i can't even imagine two dollars a day fam for unloading super, you know how the big old trucks be having all this stuff on it. You got to unload that and then working 12 hour shifts still just to get two hours a day. Listen, do two dollars divided by 12 and whatever sense you get. That's the that's what they were. They were getting paid an hour. Right. Um, it says if you don't work, you are at risk of going back to the prison or getting a disciplinary infraction. So if you just like, man, you know what? They putting us through slavery. They giving us $2 a day for these 12-hour shifts, unloading these trucks. I don't want to do it no more. But if you chose not to do it, then you get disciplinary action. And who knows what type of disciplinary action that you'll pretty much get. Uh, so the, it is a, a form. This is sounding like forced labor. But what can you do? We'll just have to see what, what you know, if this lawsuit brings about anything. Because let me just tell you this, right? When it comes to America and it comes to a, a list of to-do lists, the people that are in prison are at the very, very bottom of the list. Why do you think most of the water be brown when you go inside a prison? Why do you think it just looks like the worst state that you can ever see? Because they don't really care about it, care about the people, care about the building, the facilities. Uh, and, you know, there's just like you're on the very last to do list. Actually, we would actually send money overseas to help somebody before we cared up anything about our prison system at all. Right. Anyway, so it says. Alamiro English, a state inmate, said trustworthy prisoners perform unpaid tasks that keep prisons running to prison administration could dedicate their limited staff to uh, the function. Uh, why would the slave master, by his own free will, release men on parole who aid and assist them in making their paid jobs easier and carefree, English said. Alabama stand. It says, while the state did not comment Tuesday, the state has maintained prison and work release jobs, prepare inmates for life after incarceration. Uh, well, the statistics of people that actually end up going back to prison after they get released from prison is actually extremely high. So whatever work release after prison program that they do have in place, and this is all over, not just in Alabama. Of course, this lawsuit is specifically for Alabama. But in reality, um, you know, the, 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 the people that get out of prison and return back to prison is high. It's super high. It's like 
I don't know, like 80% of people that get out end up going right back or end up going back at, a, at some point in their life. Uh, but let's continue reading. It says the 13th Amendment, which I've been talking about and telling y'all about uh, to the U.S. Constitution ended slavery, but it still allows forced labor as punishment for crime. Just like I told y'all, states set a variety of wages for inmates laborers, but most are low. A report from the American Civil Liberties Union research found that the average hourly wage for jobs inside prisons is about 52 cents. Golly, 52 cents an hour. Uh, the plaintiff includes two labor unions. The lawsuit said that the supply of inmates labors put downward pressure on wages for all workers and uh, interferes with unions ability to organize workers. And again, y'all, my voice is a little, you know, I don't know how it sounded to y'all actually, but I am still recovering. This is my day three of recovery. So uh, it says lawsuits and initiatives in other states have also questioned or targeted the use of inmate labor. All the uh, listen. All the states that got prisons use inmate labor. It's not it's not like one person's doing it or a couple. No, all of them are doing it. Uh, that's the American way. You know, talking about you get yourself into some trouble. You're going to go to prison and you're going to be a slave, work as a slave. And that's just the truth. And that's how it goes. Right. Uh, it says men incarcerated in the Louisiana state penitentiary in September filed the suit. So look, Louisiana filed the suit. Let's see what goes on with that. Probably nothing at all. Uh, contending they have been forced to work in a prison's field for little or no pay. Even when temperatures soar past 100 degrees. I'm talking about they got them out there in 100 degree heat slaving away. You know what I'm talking about? Um, even when it's cold. You know what I'm talking about? 10 degree air. You know what I'm talking about? 10 degree freezing cold out there slaving away. You know what I'm talking about? For $2 a day. You know what I'm talking about? Or at times 52 cents an hour. Uh, but like I say, that, that's just something that comes with uh, whenever the 13th Amendment is put into action, uh, whenever you here's the thing, right? Most private prisons, well, private prisons actually have a stock. It's called Core Civic. Uh, you can actually, anyone can invest in the stock of the private prisons. Um, and I wish I could show you all a picture of it and see how it's doing right now. But, uh, you know, that's just how it goes. You know what I'm talking about? It, there's no way in blue hell that. You know, people that's inside of the prisons aren't going to be treated like slaves. That's like the main focus of you. Actually, the prisons have to remain full in order for a lot of the stuff to get done. Uh, yes, a lot of your people see a lot of people don't even care about going to the prison or jail, though, for the, for the stuff that they're doing. They don't care at all until they actually get in there and understand that this is literally just another form of slavery. You know, you had somebody like O.G. Percy who told y'all that he literally had to pick cotton. Like they literally had him in there picking cotton because why? Because because it's literally slavery, right? So think about what you do before you do it. And I'll keep y'all updated on the lawsuits and see how they goes. Anyways, let me know some coming up below. Let me know what you think about this entire deal. I'm out. Whoa. The way that sounded, you can tell that my voice is like down right now. But hey, it is what it is. I'm going to make sure I get y'all the content. I'm out.